In this video, we're going to see about the examination of abdominal lump with simplified animations. And if you're new to my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you will not miss out any of my upcoming videos. Make sure to watch this video till the end. There are some freebies to download for free in the end of this video. Let us see the sequence on how to do examination of an abdominal lump. First, we had to do inspection followed by palpation and then percussion. Inspection is just observing with your eyes. Palpation is when you palpate with your hands. And percussion is something you do with your two hands which is demonstrated in the graphic here i'll be talking about that in detail towards the end of the video so first let's talk about inspection we have to define the position size and shape of the lump in the abdomen so that uh, to identify the position of the lump we are dividing the abdomen into nine regions by two horizontal lines and two vertical lines as you see in the image here the two vertical lines are drawn through the midpoint between the anterior superior hyalic spine and the pubic symphysis as shown by circles in this image the horizontal lines are two in number the upper horizontal line is also called as transpyloric plane because it passes through the pylorus of the stomach it is present midway between the cephe sternum and the umbilicus as you can see here in this image the lower horizontal line is called as transtubercular line because it is present at the level of tubercles of the iliac crest of the pelvic bone so with this we are dividing the abdomen into nine regions which will help us to identify position of a lump so as numbered in this image Number 1 is right hypochondrium, 2 is epigastrium, 3 is left hypochondrium, 4 is right lumbar, 5 is umbilical, 6 is left lumbar, 7 is right iliac, 8 is hypogastrium, 9 is left iliac. So let us consider a lump is present in this region as shown in the image. It is approximately right hypochondrium. Then we have to approximately tell the size of the swelling uh, just by seeing the swelling. So we are saying that it is approximately 5 cross 5 cm here. And we have to also tell about the shape of the swelling. So here we are saying that it is round in shape. The shape is not clearly made out. You can say that the shape is ill defined. So we, ha we also have to comment about the condition of the sk skin over the swelling. So if the skin is tense, it is because the skin is stretched to an underlying lump. And if the skin is red, that is because of inflammation like abscess or underlying acute appendicitis. And if the skin is shining, it is also because of stretch, can be because of an underlying lump which is stretching the skin can be pigmented because of deposition of pigments in the lump and there can be sinus or fistula opening on the swelling. We also have to look for engorged veins over the swelling. If there are engorged veins over the swelling, it indicates that the swelling is hypervascular like a sarcoma and you can also look for dilated tortuous veins which are radiating from the umbilicus which is known as caput medusae. It is because it represents, it looks like the hair of a Greek creature called uh, medusa. Then we have to observe the movement of the swelling with respiration. We are asking the patient to take deep breaths and we are seeing if the swelling is moving downwards. The swellings which originate from liver and gallbladder, spleen and stomach move downwards with respiration. That is because they are present just below the diaphragm. So during inspiration, diaphragm moves downwards. So it also pushes these structures downwards. So the swellings which originate from these structures will move downwards with respiration. Then we have to observe for visible peristalsis. You can ask the patient to lie down and observe from the side for that. It will be felt by the patient as ball rolling movements in the abdomen. So it is seen in gastric outlet obstruction and also in intestinal obstruction. In gastric outlet obstruction as seen in cases with C carcinoma stomach, it will be seen from left to right. Whereas in intestinal obstruction which is due to malignancies of its small intestine, it will be seen from right to left direction. And we have to examine the hernial sites for any visible swelling or visible cough impulse in case the swelling is not visible. I made a detailed video on inguinal hernia and the link will be available in the description of this video. It will really be helpful for you if you want to learn about hernia. Then we also have to inspect the scrotum of the patient. That is because we can miss out some testicular malignancies which tend to spread to the abdominal lymph nodes like pre and para lymph nodes and present as abdominal lump even before the testicular symptoms start to manifest. We also have to examine the left supraclavicular fossa we are looking for enlarged left supraclavicular lymph nodes that is known as Froissier sign and it is seen in cancers like stomach cancer, breast cancer, pancreas cancer and colon cancer. Now we are done with inspection and we come to palpation. Here we are basically confirm the sign, confirming the findings of inspection and also finding some more stuff other than what we found in inspection. First is tenderness. It is not as traumatic as shown in this graphic but however what we are doing here is that we are touching or putting pressure over the swelling and we are seeing changes in the facial expression of the patient that denotes that the patient is having pain on pressing over the swelling. Should I make the mis mistake of asking the patient if they have pain while pressing the lump? That is not what we are supposed to do. We just have to put pressure over the swelling and distract the patient by asking some history 
and while doing so we observe the facial expression changes and if there is any facial expression changes it indicates that that is tenderness and then we touch and see if there is any local rise in temperature which denotes an underlying inflammation then as seen in inspection we are also confirming the position size and shape which we found on inspection the size is confirmed by using a ruler and then margins are very important finding we have to see if the margins are well defined or ill-defined well-defined margins are usually seen in malignancy whereas ill-defined margins denote that the swelling is either of inflammatory or traumatic in origin then we palpate and see for the consistency of the swelling it can give us a clue regarding the origin of the swelling example of soft swelling is lipoma which is a benign tumor originating from adipose tissue cystic swelling are seen in cysts and firm swellings are seen in fibroma which is a benign tumor of the fibrous tissue and heart swellings are seen in carcinoma which is malignancy then uh, as seen in inspection we are confirming the moment with the respiration by placing a hand over the lower border of the swelling and asking the patient to take deep breaths the swellings which originate from liver and gallbladder spleen and stomach tend to move downwards with respiration and as they move downwards they push our hands downwards and that is what helps us to identify that there is movement with respiration then we are holding the swelling with our hands and seeing if, if the swelling is mobile and if, if it is mobile, we are seeing that it is mobile in which directions. There can be restricted movements if the swelling is fixed, like in case of a fixed malignancy, or if the swelling or, or the swelling can be freely mobile if the swelling is not fixed to any underlying structure, it will be freely mobile in that case. And then we see about the palatability of the swelling. So before seeing what is palatability, just know that the renal swellings can be palatable. So how to elicit palatability? That is done by placing one hand behind the loin of the patient and the other hand in front of the abdomen and putting pressure and moving anterior, in anterior posterior direction and you'll be able to palpate the renal swellings and then we have to find if the swelling is parietal in origin or intra-abdominal parietal means it arises from the abdominal wall layers like the muscles intra-abdominal means it arises from the within the abdomen like from any viscera in the abdomen it can be done by two tests namely rising test and leg lifting test also known as carnet test basically these two tests have similar principles in rising test we ask the patient to keep their hands over the chest and raise their head by doing so they are making the abdominal muscles taut if the swelling is arising from the uh, parietal layers the anterior abdominal wall layers the swelling will become more prominent on doing so whereas during this test if the swelling becomes less prominent or disappear it means that it is intra-abdominal in origin this is because when the abdominal muscles become taut, an intra-abdominal swelling will be pushed inside, so it will, be, it will become less prominent or invisible. Similar mechanism is for the lift, leg lifting test, also known as carnet test. So you are making the abdominal muscle taut, parietal swellings become more prominent, whereas intra-abdominal swellings become less prominent on doing this test. And then we have to see if the swelling is pulsatile or not. It is of two types. The first type is transmitted pulsations. That is seen if the swelling is present just above the iota. So the pulsation of iota just getting transmitted on the swelling and we are able to palpate it over the abdomen of the patient. So the pulsation is not originating from the swelling per se. In this case, it is just transmitted from the iota. The second one is called as expansile pulsation. Here the swelling is originating from the iota itself. For example, in case of aortic aneurysm, the swelling will be originating from the iota itself and it will be felt on the abdomen during palpation. How to differentiate between transmitted pulsation and expansile pulsation? We'll see that now. So in expansile pulsation, as you see in the graphic on the right side, we are placing the index fingers of both hands on the sides of the swelling and since it is expansive in nature, you, it, the fingers will be moving away from the swelling in expansive pulsation whereas in transmitted pulsation, you will be feeling the pulsations but the fingers won't move away. You also have to palpate the hernial orifice to look for swellings like inguinal hernia or inguinal lymph nodes and also you have to see if there is any palpable cough impulse, asking the patient to cough and see if there is any impulse felt at the hernial orifice site. I made a detailed video on inguinal hernia and the link will be in the description of this video. Then you have to palpate the liver, spleen and kidney because these are important organs and if the swelling, if these while palpating these organs you can get a clue regarding the origin of the swelling if they origin if they originate from any of these structures. You have to try to insinuate your fingers between the swelling and costal margin. If the swelling originates from liver and spleen which are present just beneath the costal margin, it will not be possible to insinuate your fingers between the costal margin and the swelling. Then you have to do percussion. So percussion involves placing your index finger of left hand over the swelling and tapping it with the index finger of right hand over the index finger of the left hand as demonstrated in this graphic here. And then you have to hear the sound produced. So it is usually tympanic while percussing on abdomen. That is because of presence of air in the bowel loops. Whereas if you percuss over solid organs like liver and spleen, it will be dull. Percussion also helps us to identify presence of free fluid in the abdomen. It can be done by various tests like fluid thrill and shifting dullness. 
and since they are not related directly to uh, examination of abdominal lump i thought of making a separate uh, two or three minute video on uh, demonstration of free fluid in the abdomen so once it is ready it will be available in the description and please make sure to check out my videos on hydrocel hernia and a super interesting video on cleft clip and cleft palate which will be very helpful to you and the slides for this video will be available for free the link will be in the description you can click that and download the slides for free please make sure to hit the like button share this video to your friends and hit the subscribe button so that you can keep watching all my upcoming videos without missing out any of them and it will also help me to make more videos for you guys you can support my channel by donating on buymeacoffee.com slash medbits while downloading the slides for free and also you can follow me on instagram the id will be in the description of this video click this video right here to watch the next video and you can watch my entire surgery playlist by clicking right here please make sure to subscribe for more videos thank you so much for watching this video till the end i'll see you guys in my next video bye